Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having us here with this uh, great educational event. I'd like to thank Gary Machen and Trevor Studd for having us with the British Barber Arms. Uh, my name is Van Council. I've been in the hairdressing business for 44 years. Uh, opened my first hair salons uh, 36 years ago. We have seven salons here in Atlanta, uh, Van Michael Salons, and we have one barber shop now, which we opened up two years ago. And we also have a partnership in Japan where we have 42 salons. So many years ago when we opened up the salon, our first salon in 1984, we started off with seven chairs and now we have about 400 employees in Atlanta and another six or 700 employees in Japan. But we wanted to do something for the hairdresser community many years ago where hairdressers will have a way to earn a high wage and have benefits like insurance and 401ks and paid vacation. So a couple of years ago when we decided to do uh, the men's salon, we call it the barber shop, we wanted to create the same kind of environment for uh, the barbers that we have for the hairdressers, you know, and we're very fortunate that we have well over 100 hairdressers in Atlanta have been working for the company anywhere from 10 to 30 years. So we feel like, you know, by creating an environment where people can have a career path, they stay with you for a long time. Uh, so this is our going on a little bit over two years with the barber shop. Uh, we have learned many things that it is different business than, than the salons that we were uh, working in doing women's hair. But, uh, but our idea was that we wanted to bring the same level of customer service for men in barbershops as we have for the women. So we have a little thing that we call the performance wheel that we work around with all the women's salon and we create one uh, for the men's salon. And if you're not watching this uh, in our interactive session room, please click the button below and join us where you can ask questions and interact. But what we have here as we're looking is that we start off with what we call our client card because we feel like the most important thing that we can do at our uh, clients is remember everything about them, you know, their name, husband's names, I mean, the wife's name, uh, children's name, what they do, what we did with their hair before, what we're going to do. So it's all about building relationships. Uh, then we have a certain way that we like to greet our clients. We believe in really thorough consultations using uh, portfolios and pictures when we're doing haircuts we're really you know a picture means is what the thousand words are really explain to what we're doing to a customer that they totally understand what they're getting we believe in giving them stress relieving treatments massages you know uh, we perform the service it's really big that we teach our client how to style the hair we also give everybody a hot shave on their neck it's included in the haircut so we have about 11 different things you know that we try to do and also, it's very important to teach uh, and educate your client on how to shampoo, condition, take care of the hair, and style the hair. But anyhow, today, we have three great hairdressers uh, that we're going to be working with. And we've chosen today to do a lot of scissor cutting because that's kind of our specialties coming from the background of education from doing women haircut, sassoon training. So we're going to do some long haircuts for you, and then we are going to do one... Uh, probably ball fade clipper cut and we know that you're going to be seeing a lot of that in the, this 24-hour education event so we're going to give you a little bit of everything so first I'll start off with our creative director of, of the company and uh, also the manager of the barbershop Daniel Holtzberger he's been with the company for over 20 years so we'll walk over here and start off with Daniel and let him kind of explain to what he's doing hi Daniel what are hey you guys doing what's going on is everybody doing well so here's what we're talking about right now is Van had just mentioned that we're really big about our performance wheel. And for me, I couldn't be more on board with having a performance wheel because my belief is this, the most successful companies in the world are not necessarily the best product or the best service. They're the most consistent. So if you're consistent and you give the same level of service every single time, that client's going to come back. If you're hot and cold, you had a good day, you had a good date, and you're great with your client, your girlfriend just broke up with you the night before, and all of a sudden you treat your clients like crap, they're not going to come back. So you've got to have that consistency, and that's what a performance wheel does. And the biggest thing with me on a performance wheel, and the two barbers I have with me I can attest to are amazing with this as well, is a consultation. A consultation sets you apart from the most, most of the people in our industry. And one thing Van mentioned is we're really big on portfolio consultations. So with my model here, I was talking to him about, you know, 
he's got short hair already. It, it, it's been short. You guys can, can kind of see, I, I've just went through with some scissor over comb, taking it down. I will fade this into his beard in just a little bit, but because he has a beard, I don't want to do an actual bald, bald line through here. I just wanted to go into a really more of like a shadow fade. And then I'll kind of fade right back down through here as well. And I'll bust out the clippers for those. But really, with my scissors, I can get almost as tight as I can with my clippers until I get down to almost right into that transition into the skin. But what I do want to do is I want to keep some hair up here. Everybody knows that a pompadour has been huge in the barbering industry for the last, I don't know how many, two, three, four years. So something that I've been seeing a lot more now is there's this internet sensation that I don't even know who this kid is, but people bring in the pictures all the time. And it's basically like a pompadour, but it's pushed out. So really what I'm going to show you guys how to do is take a disconnected pompadour. We're going to cut this horizontally through the sides. Actually use slightly diagonal moving forward section so that you're gaining some length through the front. And then be able to style it just a little messier rather than actually quaffed into a pompadour. You know, that pompadour you actually cut from short to long this way. We're going to be cutting short to long this way. So we'll be able to have that extra length through the front and we'll let the hair move, but it'll have just a little bit more texture. And like Van said, we're really big about teaching our clients how to style their hair. This is another thing where it's like you have a client that had a pompadour for the last three years. You're going to show them how to just change it up a little bit and things will be real easy. So if you want to take a step right over to your left, we're going to take a look at our, my friend Sierra, who's actually busted out a razor. And uh, Sierra, what are you doing right over there, my dear? So we are going to be razor cutting the bottom half here. Um, he really likes to have more of a control top, so we'll be scissor cutting this, the top and just doing a square and then following the head shape for it. But for the sides, he said they get really poofy because he's got some great curl textures. So going through with the razor here, and I love cutting with the razor because you can texture and you can take out weight while cutting at the same time. So with the razor, the more you move it up and down, the more open it is, the more weight it's going to take out. The smaller movements you have, the less weight it's going to take out. And when I'm cutting with the razor, typically for the shaves, we hold more like this, two fingers here and one finger here. For cutting, I keep one finger here because I get more control this way when I'm moving to section in the hair. And then coming in here, and I'm doing about like a medium open to close because I don't want to encourage those sides to get too poofy, but I do want to take out a good amount of weight here. So Sierra, you've been in the company for how long? Six years. So Sierra went to a Aveda school in Cincinnati. We get a lot of students from the Aveda school, so she went through our two-year Van Michael program. She works in the Van Michael salon doing, you know, women's hair, what's three days a week? Uh, two and two. Two, two and two. two. Okay, so she's, she's splitting her time between both. So it's really great converting hairdressers over into the barbering field. And we're very lucky when we first opened and she was in the training course here, we had Gary Machen come in. He's been in twice in a week with all the barbers and really worked with us to teach us how to use clipper cuts. He's worked shaving with uh, uh, hot steam machines. And uh, so Gary was a really big help in giving us a lot of directions of which way to go. My experience have been it's, it's easier to take hairdressers and teach them barbering than it is, it's a little bit harder to take true barbers and teach them uh, scissor cutting, uh, hairdressing, women's hairdressing. I find it's a little bit easier to go from the hairdresser to barber than vice versa. But anyhow, um, Sarah does great work. I mean, Sierra does great work and uh, she has a very, very big clientele. So next is, uh, we'll move over to Brian. He's been with the company how long, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Which time, man? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this time around, I've been back at the shop since we opened, February 2018. And, um, man, couldn't be, couldn't be happier. Um, so my dude walks in today, hasn't had a haircut in four months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm highly inspired by 90s, aesthetic 90s haircuts. Y'all did a good before picture, right? I Yes, we did. Yeah, okay. we did. Right. Um, so... Really today we're looking at removing a lot of bulk. So I'm going through square cutting through here. Once we get to the round of the head, I'm starting to round down because I want to take out a lot of this weight, but still keeping the weight through here. And then I'm going to leave this top connected through the back, but disconnected to, through the front. Uh, cut on a little bit of a bias through there. And uh, yeah, it was just I showed him photos of Johnny Depp, 90s Johnny Depp. And okay. I'm like, what a 
freaking cool dude with cool hair. And this is a cool guy with cool hair, so yeah. let's let's match it. So uh, would you? So you do about on the average about 16 clients a day. 16 to 18 a day. Yeah. yeah. Would you say most of your clients are? Scissors are... Uh, it's a good mix, but you know, the funny thing is after COVID, it was all, hey, I grew my hair out, haven't had a haircut, and I haven't been able to have my hair this length in a while. I want to keep it. How do I maintain it? So that was great for me. I'm like, ah, oh, this is what I love to do. So cool. Let me show you how to do that. And it's been really fun for me to have guys that used to come in that were doing bald fades that now have hair and they want to just like keep that and maintain that. So that's been a really fun thing for me. Um, so it's, but it's a good mix. You know, you still got the guys that want to keep it looking sharp and looking clean. So, so what, what do you charge for a men's haircut? Right now, 50. $50. Yes, sir. And that includes, what all do you include in Man, the Yeah, we do the consultation. Like I started with my gentleman today, showing him, you know, the haircuts that I was thinking of, asking him what he thought of. I also always ask clients, hey, how do you style your hair? What products are you using? Because I need to know, am I going to give you a high maintenance haircut for a person that's very low maintenance? Um, so we go through the whole consultation. Then we did the shampoo. Uh, I talked to him about the products I was using, why I was using those products. And then we talked about a little bit about styling products. And then when we're done, I'm going to go through how I'm going to um, style him out and tell him why I'm styling him out. But so the guy's not going to use a blow dryer, so I'm not going to give him hard hair to blow dry. <laughs> right. Yeah, so you're very good at retailing. You're one of the top retailers in the salon. So you feel like it's the reason you sell so much retail because you're just taking just time take out that time and, and teaching. To, to talk to clients. And I think if you believe in what you're talking about, your client's going to believe you as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the biggest thing. And then it b builds a trust between me and the client because my client knows I'm never going to steer him wrong. I'm going to yeah. tell him how much product to use. Hey, hey, don't use overused products because I'm not just trying to sell you product. I just want your hair to look cool. Yeah. You're really not selling what you're doing. You're, you're giving them information and, you know, how to take care and style right. the hair. And by, by giving them that information, then in, in return, they're purchasing product. That's right. So they want to yeah. be able to duplicate sure. what you've done here in the chair. For sure. Yeah, yeah awesome. absolutely. Right. And, that's, and that's the main goal. Guys are always like, well, how do I do this at home? Well, let me show you. It's not as hard as you think. Yeah, it's funny. What hairdressers are just kind of think how easy it is to know how to put a little pomade in their hair but they do it so often they, they do it so well they don't realize the simple thing is putting in pomade most people don't know how to do it that's right they can't even figure out how to do it themselves they, they're home. putting too much in or they're you know they don't understand like hey don't work it from the front to the back work it from back to front that way you're not working with all your products sitting at the front of the hair yeah i always use the reference of there's something about mary not a lot of people get that reference <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that one <laughs> so yeah. no comment no comment no comment <laughs> That's only because Van didn't have hair when something about Mary came out. That's true. <laughs> I, I'm a, Gary shaved my hair when he was here in, in America, and it never grew back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's so check in with Daniel. See, it looks like he's done a little scissor rubber comb. Yeah, so I've almost made it through this entire section. So basically, so whenever it comes to fading, it, the way that I believe in fading, there are three different techniques that you can look at. You can either go through like what I'm doing right now, which would be called ascending fading. So this is going from short to long. So I start down at the bottom with the fine teeth of my comb and I'm coming right up and I'm building weight, okay? So that's ascending, it's going from short to long. Now there's also a way of going through and doing it completely opposite with the scissors as well, which would be descending. That's where you would start up here, do a section, grab the next section, take it a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter. Neither is wrong, they're just, they're just different. The ascending is gonna give you a little bit longer of a flow. It's better if you were to go from, say, short to fairly short in a long period of time, or a long space. So that's why I'm doing the, the ascending. You can do that with clippers or you can do it with scissors. Same thing with descending. You can take your clippers, you can start off with a higher guard and work your way down. That's what you're usually gonna find when you're dealing with true bald fading. And then there's also another way of doing it in which is called guard skipping. Uh, that's something that I see Brian do a lot because he likes to have a long transition on his clipper fades. He doesn't like to have that really tight, tight fade. If you do, you usually jump over towards descending. So what I'm doing is I've been doing 
my left side, my right side, and then my back panel. Because I'm dealing with a pretty strong occipital bone right through here, I came through with my back panel straight up, and then I came back through side to side. So I've really busted this into five panels instead of three, and that's just so that I don't end up with any kind of a um, flat spot or a protruding spot due to the occipital bone. And you know, this light blonde hair definitely likes to show every little you know, indiscretion that you have. So I'm going over it, but I've almost gotten to the point where I'm gonna cut the top. Really, I think I'm gonna leave that all alone. Once I cut the top, I'll then come back through and I'll actually fade all of this outline and work into the beard with some clippers. But since I've got my scissors, I'm actually gonna switch over. So I, when I scissor over comb, I like to use a little bit bigger of a shear. Um, I come from a Sassoon style background in which we use small scissors. So this is as big as I ever go, which is a five and a half. But whenever I'm cutting in my fingers, I actually use just a five inch shear. So I have a tendency to feel like I'm gonna cut my fingers off if I use the five and a halves. I know a lot of barbers like to use bigger ones like six and a half, six and a quarters. Some people like sevens. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to tilt the head just slightly. I want just a little bit of graduation. So if the head rounds, right? So here's the top of the head. It rounds over to the side. Right here where my sectioning is, that's going to be my elevation. I'm going to pull the hair straight out. That's going to add just natural graduation. And I'm going to use the hair in the crown as my guide. I'm going to work short to long. Cut to my second knuckle, reposition, and then work through. This is keeping almost all the length at the very front while taking some length off through the top. And that'll all, it'll also blend through if he wants to wear this real conservatively or because of the disconnection, he can let that expand out and be a little bit um, edgier of a look. I'm gonna take parallel sections now, because I'm higher on the head, I'm going to go a little bit higher with my elevation. So if this was my first section, my next section now is going to be at this elevation. So I can go one of two ways. I can lift my arms up, but I'm getting old, so my shoulders are shot. Or I can just tilt the head a little bit. Find the piece. Lift up. And just cut. Just follow your guideline. And still maintaining all that length in the front. So now you can see it's as I pull up, if I was to cross check, it's graduated. It gains length. So it's going to build some weight towards the front and towards the top so that it can be a little bit messier. And now I'll just do the exact same thing on the opposite side. section through, comb this hair down. I can actually see this hair that was cut before. It's a little bit of a line. I'll take care of that in just a little bit. Pull this out. I actually just shifted my scissors over so that I didn't have to twist my wrist. So it's a real easy technique. What I like to do, flip the scissor and just use the outside of my thumb. Very easy, but it keeps you from having to mess up your wrists. Which, after 22 years of doing hair, 23 years, somewhere around there, my uh, wrists and shoulders, I'm finding that I need to make sure, let me tilt you this way just a little bit, my friend. Keep myself, you know, in good positioning. Proper body positioning really allows you to work a lot longer in this industry. Um, I've been at it for 22, 23 years, and I still work behind the chair four or five days a week. So there's that line that was there before. Just taking that off. Anytime you see a line, 
it means that the hair is either shorter or longer. That's what the divot is from. So in this case, the hair was just a little bit longer on top than the hair underneath. So what I'm doing is I'm rounding around the round of the head. So right there at the parietal ridge, instead of continuing to go out, I'm actually rounding up. and just making sure my blade moves really fast. Here's the biggest thing about scissor over comb. I see so many people scissor over comb and just leave tons of divots and marks in the hair. The thing about it is this, if you lift, chomp, lift, chomp, lift, chomp, it's not gonna have a consistent flow. If you can move your blade, just your single blade, really fast, and then just kind of move in unison with the comb, you're able to just nibble away any kind of indiscretions. All right, so now that I've got this part cut, I'll do a little bit more refining and I'm gonna go through with the clippers, but I'll let Sierra go ahead and talk to you about what she's gonna do. So one thing about this industry, even from the very beginning for many years, you know, you don't have to be the pioneer in anything. You know, you can find that success leaves clues and people are always willing to share different things. And the one thing that we do in the barber shop is what we, we call, that we got from the Japanese called a stand-up shampoo. So after Sierra catches you up where she's at in her haircut, maybe she can explain the stand-up shampoos and the process that we do getting our clients prepared for a haircut. So moving on up the head, um, I finished all underneath here with the razor and I want you guys to see how much movement you can already see coming through the bottom there, just because we cut that with the razor and already got that texture to come through. Um, so connecting through and just going to be following the shape of the head through the top, cutting square like I said earlier and then kind of rounding off the sides to get some layers so we don't get that mushroom effect through the sides. So with the stand-up shampoo, my clients love it because it's just something different. It's not the typical, um, it, it's just how, how are you going to be different from everybody else and that's one of our ways. And we pre-COVID, we would do a nice little neck and shoulder massage before we got the service started. So I feel like I really try and do a good scalp massage now even more so because they aren't getting that uh, neck and shoulder massage for now. Um, so basically we just start off, which these mist spray bottles, incredible. I, <laughs> this will last me like halfway through the day. So I love that I'm also saving water. So wet them down and then just shampoo them while they're sitting right here. And so really like get into it. This is first thing he said when he sat down in my chair is shampoo's the best part. Like he was so excited he was getting shampooed today. Everybody loves shampoos. I don't know what it is about just like, it's one of life's greatest pleasures. So get, there's a lot of barbershops kind of skip out on that. Um, but clients love it. It's a luxury. It gives them just that like five to 10 minutes to just de-stress a little bit. Um, do you shampoo everybody first, or do you sometimes cut them and shampoo them, or and how do you decide when you're gonna do the shampoo? Typically what I like to do, at least for my clipper cuts, um, I'll go ahead and cut the sides in the back while they're dry, as long as they don't have like hat hair, and then shampoo them standing up, spin them around, rinse them out, get a little conditioner in there, and then rinse them out again, and then I like to cut the top wet. But if it's an all scissor cut like this, I'll shampoo at the beginning. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Man, I just hope you got a good before on him. This, <laughs> this guy's looking completely different. Both he's a of new them. man. He's a new man. I just asked him how he's feeling. He said he's feeling pretty well. Man. So I'm just connecting this, this top through the back. I'm going through using mohawk sectioning. Pulling that up. Finding my guide. We're not really taking much off that top, man, because we really want to keep as much as we can. So, Brian, you're consistent, busy almost all year round, regardless if it's July or, or December. So you're really good at rebooking your clients. So how often do you recommend your clients to come in? And what is your secret to getting people to rebook before they walk out? Um, so it depends on the haircut, obviously. And, you know, I. I try to put all of that into my consultation as well. How often are you getting your hair cut? And, and then ask them why. Why maybe they don't come as frequently. You know, kind of gauge them out. Um, and then I think the main thing for them is you go, hey, listen, uh, I book up pretty quickly. 
So if there's a specific day time that you know you're gonna need, I'd highly recommend go ahead and booking that. We give uh, text and phone call confirmations, um, which our clients love. Um, that way, 24 hours beforehand, they know they're not gonna be able to make it. They always give us a little, little nod and let us know. Um, so you just stress the importance of it. But I always gauge a client by you know, the haircut. For a guy like this, I'm gonna probably tell him six to eight weeks, you know, let it grow. Give, you know, the whole reason to have long hair is to rock it. Uh, but you're gonna need to get those sides cleaned up. And then as somebody that's coming in with a really nice tight fade, maybe go two to three weeks. Um, but people, you know, people love to, love to plan their life, I think, especially in the, in the male world. Guys are, you know, very planned ahead, I feel like, so. Well, I think when you're, you know, charging fifty dollars more for a man's haircut, that you're going to get a lot of professional men, and you know they have appointments, and you got doctors and lawyers, and exactly, you know, they're trying to eat CEOs. lunch and get a haircut at the same time, you know. Yeah, so they that's know, why they, they love the battery. <laughs> yeah, they want to walk right in, and uh, you know, you be ready for them, and then um, you know, get get out. You know, they don't that's have time right. to sit around for an hour. So that's right. Yeah, we're located here in a center called the Battery, and it's, it's hooked to the Atlanta Braves Stadium, you know. So there's a lot of uh, restaurants, office buildings, bars, all kind of entertainment, adult entertainment here, uh, Punch Bowl Social, Not bowling. adult entertainment, but, you know. Yeah, well, that's why I was clearing that up. <laughs> I said bowling. I mean, ooh, things get weird. Yeah, yeah. But yes, there is things for everyone here at the Battery. <laughs> well, not everyone. <laughs> uh, not everyone. Let me lift you up a little bit like that. So if you want to look down here real quick, um, something that I'm doing is just going through with some T-edgers and I'm starting off with the beard. So in the COVID world, we do our best to keep a mask on all the time. But, you know, when working with the beard, we do find ways to kind of work around it. So I'm lifting up with my, with the actual, uh, with my thumb on this mask. And then I'm just taking my T-edgers, just going straight down. And then coming back up. So something that uh, I was talking to this young man about was, and here's something I always do with every client, brows and ears. Dudes do not want brow and ear hair. So looking straight through, this is a pretty substantial amount of hair on this beard, and we're going to keep most of it. But what I like to do is I like to take a straight line, straight from the beard into the neck. That way I know where to start the outline of the beard so that I can see where the shadowing will be the most so that they have a contour. So I know that underneath here, I'm going to go from here down to take that hair away. So literally, I'll just go straight through. You can hear it's catching. Go down. Straight through. Go down. And I'll shape all of this up in just a second, but... It's kind of like just a regular haircut, you know, get that outline set in and then work up. So from here, I'm just going to touch him up a little bit right through here. And then all of this I'll take away just with a free hand motion. Not that I'm taking it all away, but I'm just and feel cleaning him up. I already went through with a open half guard, so basically uh, one eighth of an inch and I came down to kind of blend in with his uh, sideburn area. I'll touch that up as well in just a second with the scissors to make it really catch. But the best thing that I do is this. One thing also, so if you've got any questions right now, if you're not watching this in our interactive session room, you know, please click the button below and join us where you can ask questions. Because I love it when people ask me questions about everything and we can go back and forth. We can uh, answer any questions. We'll even have some picture or some questions popping up for you. So now looking at this, if I take a step back, I need to clean up a little bit down through here. I need to clean up just a touch right there. And I need to fade this in just a touch. And then I'll go through with his uh, lip and actual front of the beard. One little thing, I'll tell you something, guys. 
If you're wearing masks in the salon, it sucks to get hair in it. Your client feels the same way. So just do this. Make sure you clear it out before you put it back on them. There is nothing more <laughs> annoying than hair in a mask. And so from here, what I can do is this. I can actually do a little trick. One of my clients that's a dentist showed me because once I do this, I have full access to the sideburn. And I can go back through with my scissors. I'm gonna tilt you just a little bit, my friend. And just the tips of the shears. Sorry, bud. And then just the edge of the trimmer coming up. Bring you over, close your eyes for just a sec. Take the wide teeth of my comb, turn it out just a little bit. Take any stray hairs away off of his brows. He's got blonde hair, so I don't want to go too tight with those brows. Otherwise, it's going to look like he's got a hole. And I've had that happen before. That is something that you don't want. So I'm taking this down to just, if there's a closed half guard, I'm going just a touch open and just flicking out that little transition. Just lets that transition have no uh, no indiscretions on there, as well as right through here. I can then descend. And start working his outline. And you know, I find with you know dark hair, I like to make hair really clean on those outlines, um, just because you can really see it. You can. Go up again just a little. You can really see the, the, the contrast between the, the skin and then so now but I like this to be just kind of a soft transition. So open guard or I mean so same principles if I was doing a bald fade with just leaving a little bit of hair. One thing I love whenever I'm fading hair is um, using a knuckle brush. Uh, I got this one from a friend of mine, Josh LaMonica, um, and I don't know if he's watching or not, or if you guys are familiar with his, uh, his uh, training program, Menspire, but that's a great barbering program as well. And then, I mean, you can see that side compared to the other looks drastically different just by doing the outline but still keeping it really soft just with that shadow fade rather than a true bald fade on that blonde hair so i'm going to go back through i'm going to work the same way i'm going to start with the beard work back to the center as and you guys can see what sierra is doing i would say uh because daniel was working on the beard i was going to bring up like when we closed down in march uh for covid we were closed for five weeks and we were literally the first salon in the whole country to open back up. And then after we were open back up about a month, we realized the challenge that we had because we're doing temperature checks when people come in, hand sanitizer, masks uh, for the staff and the clients, you know, mandatory, we still are. But the problem was getting the beards done, you know, with, with the mask on. So that's why we came up with these plexiglass shields in between each station so that we can uh, just work around the beards, pulling the mask off just for a little bit. But by having these plexiglass shields, you know, the customer and the staff next to them still feel very safe. So I would recommend these if you're working and you're doing beards and you don't have any partitions in between. This is a good way to make, keep people safe, you know, the staff and the customer during this period. All right, Sierra. So just cleaning up around the edges now. Um, I see this with a lot of my guys that get that little curly cue <laughs> right here. Um, that's that's going to stay curly. So I love coming in there with the edgers and just kind of like uh, freehanding it just to get that curl out of there. I personally, I don't want a curly sideburn. And if you take it tight enough, it won't do that. Um, something I did want to talk about in the front here. What I always like to do is pull this front part straight ahead, whatever length we're doing, because a lot of times I'll find that this will be extremely longer than the rest of the hair because we come down in the forehead, right? 
Um, because if when you're doing like pompadour, I'm like want to conserve a lot more of that length in the front there, great. But um, I didn't want his front to be that heavy, so I'll pull it forward here and just follow that hairline, kind of cut it a little bit rounded, and then take vertical sections here, and again following the head shape there. That way don't get too much weight in the front, otherwise we'd have a nice softer look through here and just kind of like a bush in the front. So not the look we're going for, so. Got that front nice and layered as well. And then we'll just kind of keep going, cleaning up around the edges here. Sorry. I don't know if you guys saw that, the van is sweeping. So. <laughs> I, I, wanna I'll show, tell you, I, I wanted you to show how much hair Brian has cut off. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that was a lot of hair, my yeah. friend. That was a lot of hair. I'm so excited. I also want to bring up the point that it's very important to keep your station clean. That is extremely. Clients will not come back to a dirty station and brushes. And if you're going to charge a lot of money, you got to look like you're worth it. So That's you right. got to keep everything clean. But every time you finish a client, you should straighten everything up and clean up and wipe up and sweep up and you know get a whole new start for the And it shows that client. owners are are more than just an owner. I mean, the man is going to sweep up. That's Absolutely. Oh, well, man, I'll tell you. I've owed many a toxic, uh, smocks and towels and that's right. washed and swept and that's did right. janitorial work and We're done. clean toilets. To <laughs> no problem, bro. How do you feel, man? Get I'll tell you what. I, I can tell you guys this. Van was, uh, I was, I remember working in the salon when he still did clients, and I'm not kidding when I tell you this. He would pick up a broom anytime he had a chance. Just to make people feel bad and lazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do remember one time there was an assistant, like and she, he, Van had, you know, he had about 25 clients that day. And she says, he goes, where's the broom? Because there was too much hair, there was hair on the floor. And she goes, oh, it's right over there. And for some reason, that assistant wasn't there anymore the next day. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bring this up like so. Sorry, buddy, I'll close that out of your eyes. So bring it like so. What I like to do is I like to use my fine teeth comb to just to comb this out to see what's going on. Almost kind of, it's almost like picking out the hair just to see where this hair is gonna fall. And then I can come back through and I like to use my mirror. Here's my line. Boom. Yeah, it makes it so easy if you use that mirror and you look at what you're doing. Go to the opposite side. Comb that out, set through. All right. Just then looking straight ahead. Coming back. Just making sure it's nice and balanced. And then from here, bring this down just for a second. And I just take the open guard. I'm sorry, the open half guard. And I just kind of freehand down. Sorry, bud. I just pulled on him. And then I just knock out around his mouth. Yeah. Typically, I'd He's gonna put this mask back on, but typically I would then go through with a little bit of oil just for his beard. Um, something I like to use is this is by Aveda, it's called cooling oil. And what I like to do is this, I just like blast off all this hair. Make sure I comb out the beard really good. Let that for one second. I literally put two drops. Literally one two of those. And I'll tell you what, this, so this stuff it has a little bit of a mint smell to it, which in all honesty, when wearing a mask and you get really hot, especially here in Atlanta, where it's you know still even here in September, 100 degrees, it makes it super nice for us because it, just kind of cools you off a little. So I'm going to put just a touch of a real yeah, light gel. A couple times. I mean, yeah. just a touch. <laughs> Maybe a pearl size amount. Put that through the hair. 
are you using? Just a little bit of the Aveda um, Firm Home Gel, so yeah. I was showing them. Just a touch, I mean, it's just a pea size amount. And then I'm just gonna blow dry the hair. Back and forth. One thing I like to use, this is a brush that I use a lot on men. It's an Ergo called Diamond Brush. It's got really soft, bald tips because guys aren't accustomed to really using a brush on their hair. And I'll blow dry all the hair to one side, back to the other. And it really just helps polish off the hair. It also gives the cuticle a little bit of that finish. And I'm going to do, I mean, you can kind of see he's already got that natural texture in his hair, but I am going to go through and do just a little bit of seamless point cutting. I'll start in the back, horizontal sections, elevate the hair up. You should have a point in the middle because you cut everything from one side to the other, but I'm just doing some deep seamless point cutting. I'm not getting rid of my triangle. If when I cut the hair and I pull it out, it looks like that, then when I point cut it should look like that same same shape with just a little bit of air in between there's no sense in taking your time and cutting hair if you're just gonna cut big triangles out of it if you're gonna do that just go ahead and do it from the get-go last section And you can see that added that just a little bit of texture through the front. And now when I put in some pomade, I'll actually use like a thickening clay. Um, and that will really allow for the, the texture to come out in the haircut. Just saw a little piece that I wanted to refine. The one challenge with scissor over combing some blonde hair is for the next three hours, I could go back over it and just check any little spot right here. But yeah, so now what I'm going to end up doing is real simply make sure I get all this hair off of him. I'll take a little bit of this. It's uh, called thickening paste. It's like a clay, okay? He said he liked the matte finish. This has got a touch of shine, but not a greasy look whatsoever. Put it in. Here's the big thing about teaching your clients. You show them a pomade, they just take that clump that I took out, put it right here, stick it right on their head. A la, you know, something about Mary. If you rub it in your hands, show them that you've got to put it on your palms and your fingertips, and then use your fingertips to run it through. Then you can take the palms and actually mold the hair wherever you want it. What I'm liking right now is I've pushed that all up, now I'm pushing it back down on the sides. Whoops, sorry boss just kind of letting that flick out. That's kind of what I've been seeing with all these young guys that are coming in nowadays. They like that where it's just pushed forward and flicked out. Almost as if you put a hat on your head and then let the front flick out. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. Nice. And my big thing is I always like to use the mirror to see if I've got any shadowing wrong. I want to make sure I'm consistent from side to side. Yeah, looks good, man. So it looks like Brian, Brian's got somebody over down there that looks like he's all finished up as well. Yeah, man, we're done. I actually wanted to show this photo because I thought it was pretty cool before I even knew what his hair was going to be. I was just thinking of like what I wanted to do. And I found this really cool photo of Johnny Depp from the 90s. And as soon as I showed my man, he was like, yes, that's the cut. That's what I want. So I feel like we kind of hit that today with that mark. Um, so I wanted to talk about product that I was going to put in his hair. So first thing is the Aveda texturizing tonic, which is a sea salt sugar spray. It recreates what your hair would do if you went to the beach. So this guy's obviously got a lot of nice texture. So we just want to keep, keep his texture looking good throughout the day. I go pretty heavy handed, man. He's got a lot of hair, so it's not gonna hurt it. Just kind of spraying that through. And then the next thing is the Aveda grooming cream. 
Reason I like this, moisture control, not a lot of hold. Somebody with longer hair is not looking for hold. We're not looking to cement the hair down. We just want to give it a little bit of hold or a little bit of control, not hold. So kind of think of it like a lotion. You're going to kind of work that back to front using your hands like a brush almost. So we went through this. He said he's, you know, he's not going to be blow drying his hair. Do what you were doing with your hair just a second ago. Show him what you do with the flip. Do the flip thing. There you go. That's what most of my dudes at 18 are going to be doing with their hair. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to him about blow drying. I know what he's all about and that's what it's going to do. And I think we, you know, we gave him something that he can rock and grow out for six to eight weeks or 10 to 12 weeks. It's still going to be a great haircut. Can you hear me with the blow dryer on? You're okay. Okay. Um, so with, Curls I actually use the same products on him that Brian used, the texture tonic and the grooming cream. With curly hair, I always recommend to, pro to clients, you want to use something for moisture to help with the frizz and something with some sort of hold in it to give it that definition to come through. And especially with the curls, I always talk with all of my clients, female and men, you never want to towel dry the hair and roughen it up because that takes stretches the curls out. So when I go to style the hair, curly I want it to be more on the sopping wet side because it causes the curls to clump together and then towel dry you just want to lightly press the hair with the towel so the whole time you're encouraging that curl to come through you're never trying to like uh, disrupt it in any way and then well, we're probably going to mostly air dry most days this is just to help speed up the styling process here so I'm just going low blow high heat which is going to give I'm not messing with it too much because um, we're going for more of a controlled look if he wanted to see more of that volume go through, I'd be getting more in there and like messing it up a bit more, but we're going for more controlled here. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing is because almost all guys, when they get out of the shower, will roughen up the hair. And then another big thing is when talking about how to use product, I was talking with him, we get like a peanut size mount out and make sure we're working it through the hair. 80% of guys will work it through and then just go like that and they're done, right? And then all the product is right here in the front. You want to make sure you're actually working it through and giving your clients these lessons because if they look out here looking great and then tomorrow they shampoo their hair and it looks <laughs> not so great, that's on you and you want them to look good all the time because so that's going to bring you more clients and they're going to keep coming back to you. Um, so yeah, and we're almost dry here so it's almost done and he was saying <laughs> Sometimes you gotta fight with it and work with it. Um, but with curls, it's all about playing. I love playing with people's natural textures. And I love that like nowadays people are accepting it more. They're not fighting it as much. Um, and it's all about just playing with it. See what the hair wants to do. Okay, you wanna go this way? I'll work with you. Let's go that way. Let's not try and pull it all forward when it wants to go back. Work with it and it's gonna make it a lot easier for you. It looks really great. I, I love the way you're diffusing the texture and the wave in there. It's Thank real, you. really amazing. He's got awesome front. hair. Awesome yeah, hair. Yeah. I like the product you use because you can totally tell it softened the hair. Yeah. So as it dries, I'm just going to kind of lightly go through and break it up a little bit. Oh man, you've got such good hair. I love this. Sierra, I noticed you were going through that wide tooth comb. Why did you do that? Oh yeah, after it's dry? Yeah. Yeah. But why were you doing it when it was wet? Like, well, just to create more of the wave pattern? Yeah. That's good. good um i still feel a little bit bulky right in through here so okay thank you <laughs> you're the professional i want to maintain the length just take a little bit more yeah. weight out from this side 
So just holding it square to the head here. And a lot of times people always say don't mess with curly hair after it dries, but I find with my hair I love it more. The more I play with it, the better I love it. So after the hair is dry, don't be afraid of it. Yeah. It looks great. It looks amazing. Very, very so good. So good, CC. Well, it looks like um, Gary, Trevor, uh, we're running out of time here. Our 45 minutes is up. I'd like to thank you guys for having us on your uh, education event. Uh, we're very honored. And I'd like to thank Brian, Sierra, and Daniel for doing a great job. And always the models. Thank you guys. And uh, look you, forward man. to seeing all the other people. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>